Andrew, the fine-tuning of the universe stirs passions among scientists and philosophers, and I think there are kind of three categories. Uh, some people say that's because God, there's a God. Others say that there's a multiverse, and so the multiverse selects all different random combinations, and the one that we're that can produce life is the one that we're in, so we think that's special and it really isn't. And the third view is that the fine-tuning we think that there's th there is really um, uh, some kind of an artifact, that it really isn't as fine-tuned as we think it is. Uh, from your perspective, when you look at the fine-tuning of the universe, do you think it's real? And what do you think the origin is? There are several very distinguished cosmologists who've pointed out that there are aspects of the universe that seem to be just right to have the universe as we know it, and for which at the moment we don't have any uh, explanation. Um, one of the first of those was Fred Hoyle, who uh, discovered theoretically, and then it was confirmed experimentally, that there had to be a particular nuclear resonance for carbon to appear in the universe. And he afterwards commented, uh, you know, it seems as if the whole universe is a put-up job. <laughs> Now, there are a number of uh, other cosmologists, not necessarily coming from a background of belief in God, so Hoyle himself was an atheist, who have nevertheless noticed similar things. Lord Rees has written a book called Just Six Numbers, where he points out that just six numbers had to be right. Or Paul Davis, who's uh, with us here at this conference, has uh, commented that it seems as if the universe has a purpose, and that purpose includes us. I don't think that any of these observations is uh, a knockdown argument for the existence of God. In fact, I don't think there's any single knockdown argument for the existence of God. But it may be that these observations provide components that may be helpful. Uh, later this month, I'm going to be leading a discussion in Oxford with Richard Swinburne on Bayes' theorem in natural theology. And Bayes' theorem is, is a mathematical theorem that describes how if you take something that you will already have good reason for believing that there's a certain probability that it's true, and then you get some more information, that gives you a rational basis for updating your belief in the probability of something being true. So you might start off with these observations of fine-tuning and say, well, it, it it gives a, a belief that there's a small probability that there's a God, maybe quite small. And then you might take uh, the next observation, which is that um, this Earth seems to be suitable for carbon-based life. And you say, well, if there is a God, would he do that? Maybe he would. Maybe that just updates my belief in God a bit. And then you might notice that there is life, in fact. And then the fact that there's sentient life and intelligent life and life you know, people like us who can reason about these things and discuss them. And at each of these stages, that might give you a rational basis for updating your belief. And then you could turn to other evidence, such as the fact that um, uh, the New Testament documents or early copies of them exist in libraries. You can go and see them. Or the fact that coins have a number on them at the moment, it would be if they're minted this year, 2014. Or the fact that um, coming out of a religious background that had its day of rest on a Saturday, now throughout much of the Western world, the day of worship is a Sunday. These are all bits of evidence that you can use to update those earlier beliefs. And this fine-tuning of the universe might be actually quite a good place to start in that kind of process.